Hi, uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the uh, robot localization problem. A uh, robot localization problem is a problem that uh, we already got the map from the environment, so the map is known, and now we want to uh, locate the map, locate the robot on the map. Uh, so. Uh, Uh, so the map is known. Okay. Uh, usually there are several there are several assumptions, and each assumption give us a, a different approach. What are the common assumptions and the common approaches? Well, the assumptions are usually like. Uh, the word is static, so the word doesn't change when the robot is uh, moving around and try to localize itself. Uh, the other assumption that is uh, usually uh, very common is uh, the Markov assumption, that means, uh, uh, for instance, the measurements. Uh, are only dependent on the given state and not the previous state. You, you can have a look in the uh, my other tutorial on the beige filter. There I uh, uh, talk more about the uh, Markov property. So I strongly recommend you uh, watching this video first and then uh, coming for this video. The other assumption is <coughs> uh, linearity. That means if x it, if uh, two state space are re related, uh, uh, the relationship between xk and xk1 is linear. Means if we can model the, uh, for instance, uh, the model of the uh, movement uh, linearly, or it's not necessarily the uh, position, it could be also the velocity, acceleration, and etc. So, Linearity, uh, it might be a single hypothesis uh, versus uh, multiple hypotheses. That means uh, if we have uh, multiple uh, hypotheses for our robots, uh, for a robot's location or a single one. This comes uh, into part, for instance, in particle filter that uh, you might have multiple uh, particles that uh, try to uh, uh, simulate the location of the robot, or it might be a single one, like the one having common filter. So uh, with these assumptions, uh, we might have a Markov localization, we might have, a, 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 I'll just write it down. Uh, if we have the assumption of linearity, we usually use Kalman filter. Uh, it's a sing it's for a single hypothesis, and the assumption is uh, a linear state space, and uh, also uh, Markov assumption. And if you want to get rid of this uh, linearity, uh, usually people use something like extended Kalman filter or unscented Kalman filter. If uh, we want to go through a uh, non-model non base uh, and multiple hypotheses, uh, we usually go for a particle filter, which uh, you don't need to have uh, any model for xk and xk plus 1. So it's the Monte Carlo approach and uh, it's a powerful approach, but then you need to know the number of particles, which is another challenge. So uh, we usually have two uh, 
steps uh, in all of these uh, localization uh, problem. We usually have an update. update state and uh, prediction. Prediction will tell us according to the model that we have, what is the next XK or XK plus one. And uh, we usually for the uh, prediction, uh, we use a total probability. And uh, will it basically tell us, uh, according to the model that we have, where do we expect to be? And we usually take into account the uh, uh, odometry or the motion commands that we have uh, sent to the robot. And it, uh, it will increase the entropy. And we have the update state. What does update state mean? It means when we get into the state, we uh, will do the measurements and uh, we use a base rule. And uh, we, we read the sensory data. It, comes, it might be a 1D, 2D, 3D laser scans or RGB, uh, we extract some SIF feature, or RGBD, or uh, any other sensors. And uh, according to this, we uh, apply the Bayes rule usually, and, uh, sorry, I forgot this. And uh, this will decrease the entropy. means that, uh, well, what does it mean? It means, uh, basically, it means that uh, uh, in the prediction, uh, we will uh, uh, lose some information. Uh, we became a little bit uncertain about the robot state because the movements are not always 100% uh, deterministic. They are usually probabilistic, means when we read the autometry data, we are not sure uh, if we really move that much or uh, if we, take into account the motion command. We, there's always uncertainty about the uh, next uh, um, a robot state uh, because there's always noise. And uh, and in the update, uh, we uh, apply the base rule and uh, we read the sensory data. And uh, according to the new measurement, we always, uh, we usually uh, <laughs> decrease the entropy, means we became more certain, more and more certain, where are we now? Okay, so uh, in this, uh, in the uh, for this tutorial, I will explain the uh, uh, Markov localization. It's one of the easiest one, and uh, it's pretty simple. Well, first I will explain the algorithm, then I will. Uh, uh, we'll uh, apply the algorithm on a very simple uh, problem. So uh, in this algorithm, we have to first discretize the space, and uh, then uh, we should uh, uh, give equal chance uh, to each state because we don't know where are we on the world. We have the map, but we don't know where are we on this uh, map. So we use a uniform distribution, and then uh, we. Uh, as I said, we have two set uh, prediction and update, and we start uh, uh, sending motion commands, and we either take into account the motion commands or autometry data, and then uh, after going to next state, we read the sensory data, we do the measurement with the sensory data, and we will correct. So uh, at the first step, for each state because we don't know where are we now, uh, for i1 to n, the probability of being in each state is 1 over n. 
and uh, we usually have a loop let's say while true uh, what do we do we uh, um, read uh, Automatic data or uh, uh, motion commands. And uh, let's say we put it in the O. And uh, after uh, going to the next state, we uh, read the sensory data. Or the measurements and let's say we put it in the Z okay uh, so uh, we uh, do the uh, prediction first and uh, we predict the uh, states with uh, our prior probability, probability of uh, xi, and uh, autometry data or motion commands or whatever. And then uh, we will uh, correct it with the new uh, measurement data. So again, for every state that we had, we do the correction according to our given sensory data okay so uh, I will uh, apply this algorithm on a simple example and it will make it clear what what did they mean okay so uh, Assume we have here a uh, uh, simple problem. Uh, our word is uh, 1D and we have uh, discretized into uh, uh, five states. Okay. Uh, so uh, the probability of being in each, each one of these states is 0 0.2. It's a uniform distribution. And uh, this is our robot, and uh, our robot could uh, read the colors. And uh, here, our word has uh, the, the, as I said, this is a localization problem, so we know the map. So we know that uh, this uh, state is green, this one is red, this one is red, this one is green, and this one is again green. Uh, but we don't know where are we now in this map. So uh, the uh, graph of uh, being in each state is something like this. This is 0 0.2. So this is the first step of the algorithm. And uh, The other thing that we need to know is the uh, uh, reliability of our uh, sensor. How accurate is uh, our measurements? So uh, probability of hit is 0 0.6 and probability of miss is uh, 0 0.2 and what does it mean? It means if we are uh, truly in a red square, in a red uh, state and the measurement 
is also red. The reliability is 0 0.6. And uh, or if we are in a green cell and uh, the measurement is also green, the chance is 0. Point, uh, the the, the, the uh, uh, reliability is 0 0.6 and the probability of miss what does it mean means if we are in the green cell and we read red or other way around so the probability of being in green while we are in a red cell or probability of uh, measuring uh, red while we are in the uh, green cell. So this is the probability of uh, miss. Uh, if you have a perfect sensor, then it's going to be 0 and 1. But uh, our sensor is always uh, subject to the noise. Okay, so we uh, probability of being each, each state is uh, uh, 0 0.2. That's for the beginning. Okay, now uh, we start uh, reading the data and we, we scan and uh, we uh, get the... Uh, uh, our, our sensor is telling us red. So we might be here or here with the probability of 0 0.6 or we might be our sensors might make a mistake and we have an actually in the green, but it tells us red. So uh, we multiple these by 0 0.2. Or we uh, might have been really in the red cell and the sensor was correct. So we multiply it by 0 0.6. And uh, well, if you remember, I told you in the uh, update state, we use the uh, Bayes rule. And you know, the Bayes rule is a uh, probability of A given B uh, equal to uh, joint probability over the uh, probability of uh, uh, evidence or uh, posterior call to prior multiple over the uh, evidence. Okay, uh, and uh, the value in the denominator is the normalizer. Make it, uh, it's just there to uh, make it uh, uh, a valid probability number. So if I uh, Multiple these by these, I will get uh, 0 0.4, uh, 1.2, 1.2, uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And after uh, normalizing, uh, I will get uh, 1 over 9. 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 9, and 1 over 9. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, I, I told you uh, uh, the update will uh, increase the, uh, uh, sorry, we decrease the entropy. It's uh, loosely speaking, uh, now we are more sure where are we now, and we can see uh, it's most likely we are in one of these two states because we measure red and the reliability of our sensor was relatively good. So we most likely here rather than being here and perfectly makes sense. Uh, now going to uh, uh, movement or uh, prediction. Uh, before going to uh, uh, localization problem, it's not a bad practice to uh, write down the uh, formula that we just used. As I said, uh, in the update state, we use the uh, uh, base rule, so uh, probability of 
of A given B is equal to uh, probability of uh, A and B um, multiplied by probability of B or probability of uh, um, B given A multiplied by PA over P of B. And uh, what did we he uh, what we just did was uh, the uh, probability of a was our uh, prior which was uh, 0 0.2 0 0.2 for each one of these and probability of uh, we just write it down for instance for one of them for uh, uh, this one uh, uh, probability uh, is equal to uh, probability of A means probability of being in the, uh, uh, let's say, red, probability of X in the red, which was 0 0.2, uh, multiplied by probability of uh, measurements being uh, uh, red, if we are truly in red, which is a probability of uh, Z being red, knowing we are in the uh, red state, which was uh, uh, 0 0.6, or the uh, uh, probability of uh, Z equal red, uh, which is the, uh, as I said, it's a normalizer, it's uh, uh, sum over all these value in the denominator, so we actually don't know, need to know it, we just could uh, uh, compute the, uh, let's put down this part here, probability of being in a red state if the measurement is red. So uh, what we do, we just uh, compute all these values and then we divide uh, all of them, uh, 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 sum it up, and then we put it in the denominator. So probability of being in red state, if we are in, the, if the measurement is red, uh, is 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.6 uh, over the uh, denominator, and you can see the outcome numbers here. Okay, now we uh, jump into. Uh, uh, prediction. Or movement. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, according to the our, to the model and uh, sensory uh, and, and the uh, autometry or the motion command, uh, what where do we guess to be right now? Okay. Uh, now imagine uh, we are. Uh, uh, moving uh, with uh, this uh, probability that uh, probability of uh, we uh, our motion command is 2 it means we are going uh, uh, to sell forward so we might uh, ended up in uh, the next next cell or we might go actually two cells forward, or we might go uh, three cells forward. Uh, for instance, if the robot is uh, climbing up, then uh, usually you might go once only one cell up, or if we're going climbing down, our robot might sleep, and then uh, we go actually three cells. So the probability of uh, uh, we uh, going uh, xi plus one, if we are in the xi is a high number 0 0.8 but the uh, probability of going one cell forward after two uh, motion command is 0 0.1 and the uh, probability of uh, moving actually three cells forward is uh, 0 0.1 Okay, now imagine uh, we are uh, uh, 
we we know that okay we might be here with a probability of 0.0, 0 and uh, 0 0.5 here uh, zero here and yeah, zero here. So we 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 know that we might be here in this cell or in this one. And we have uh, done uh, two uh, motion commands and now we are interested to know where are we now. And uh, for this example, it's a, a cyclic work, it means yeah, if we reach the end of the word, we will uh, just go back to the first uh, state. So as I said, in the prediction, we use the uh, uh, total probability. Okay. Uh, let's see what's uh, what we're gonna expect. So we might uh, go actually one cell forward. We might uh, go uh, two cell forward with uh, probability of zero point eight, or uh, three cells. If we're here, we might uh, going one cell forward here, or two cells forward or uh, three cells forward. Okay, uh, so if you remember the uh, uh, total probability law, it will tell you that, okay, uh, depending on if it's continuous or discrete space, uh, probability of x equal to sigma or integral probability of x and y and uh, by uh, i equal 1 to the n. So uh, we uh, gonna apply it here. So the probability of uh, uh, we have to compute the probability of being in each one of these states uh, depending on uh, where I have been before. Uh, I will just do uh, for uh, some of them because uh, you can see it's uh, uh, 0 and 0 0.5, so it's, uh, the, the value is going to be the same. Uh, okay, so uh, if, if uh, uh, we have been here and uh, we have been moved forward for uh, uh, two times, uh, for two cells, and you can see uh, I would write it down the probability of this is x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. The probability of being at uh, the x4 uh, given x. Uh, uh, 2, you can see it's 0 0.8. Okay, and now the probability and also uh, uh, f uh, 0 0.1 for uh, uh, x3 and x5. So the probability of being the x4, we, we use a total probability law, it's equal to probability of being all in these previous states means uh, the probability of being in x4 is probability of being in uh, x4 and uh, ah, okay uh, so uh, yeah probability of being x4 I will just uh, write it down uh, I'm just gonna, uh, probability of uh, we use a base rule here, probability equal to uh, probability of x given by i multiplied by probability of y i. So, uh, is, uh, so probability of being the state number four is, uh, we use the uh, total probability is equal to probability of being each one of these states. 
joint probability of x and b in one of these states, which is equal to a probability of x uh, for uh, knowing that we have been into the x1 or x2 or x3, x4 and x5 multiple by probability of being on that particular state earlier. So uh, probability of uh, being x4 being, uh, as you can see, some of them the probability is zero, so I don't have to write it down. So the probability of uh, all be good is probability of being x4 if we have been earlier in the x3 multiplied by probability of uh, being earlier at the x3 plus uh, probability of being x4 uh, given uh, uh, you can see we might come from the x2 as well x2 multiple by probability of x2 plus uh, x4 we might only come from these and these and uh, yeah that's all because if you cut, be because if you want to write it down for uh, this and this and this, you can see the the, the chance of being there is zero. So uh, this part, so I don't have to write it down. The rest of it, or if I want to compute it for, uh, uh, for instance, for uh, this one, probability of x five. Uh, you can see we might come from uh, x two. We might come from the x4 and uh, we have to sum it up because we might come from two different uh, uh, these two different motions so <clears throat> probability of being the x5 is equal to probability of being uh, <coughs> uh, x2 multiple by probability of x2 <coughs> uh, plus uh, probability of x4 uh, oh sorry probability of x5 conditioning we have been into the x4 multiple by probability of x4 and uh, here as you can see I will write down this uh, probability of x2 uh, given uh, x5 given x2 you can see it's for the case that uh, we move uh, three step forward instead of Two, which is zero point one, and the probability of being x two is zero point five. Plus the probability of being at the uh, x five given uh, x four means that the motion from one state, which is this, you can see uh, if we actually want to move two cells forward, but we go one cell. Uh, this is uh, zero point one multiple by uh, probability of being x4 which is uh, 0 0.5 and uh, we have to compute uh, these for all the, the states in this graph that we have except those that we know that earlier uh, there is no chance being there this part when it's uh, probability of uh, uh, probability is uh, 0 and uh, I have computed uh, them earlier and I just uh, put it on the uh, next page okay so I have computed the uh, uh, probabilities uh, after the uh, prediction or the movement for uh, moving forward uh, two cells and we have the inaccurate uh, 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 motion movement and as you saw, we have to uh, compute it for uh, uh, probability of being that state multiple by the probability of the movement, these two. And the uh, final numbers are uh, 0.4, uh, 0.4. 0 0.5, 0 0.05, 0 0.4, and a distal 0 0.5, uh, 
0 0.05. And the reason was because we might have come uh, from uh, two different paths to two different uh, movements. And uh, if we compare the uh, probability of being in each state before and after movement, as you can see, before the movement, we were kind of certain that we are x1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We were uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. We were kind of certain that uh, uh, we either here, the zero polarity of 0 0.5, we either here, uh, sorry, x2, this was 0. Let's uh, correct it. We were kind of certain that we either here or we either in the x4. And for the rest of them, we were certain that we were they are, we are not there, that the chance was zero. But as you can see, now the probability has been changed. Now uh, we, are, we are not very sure where are we exactly, uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. And as you can see now, uh, 0 0.4, we might be here with the uh, probably some small chances we might be here or here uh, with some chances again we might be here and again with some chances we might be here so if you compare these two graphs you can see uh, after the movement uh, we have uh, more uncertainty about the uh, our robot uh, location and this is uh, what we get by increasing the entropy and uh, <coughs> If you compare it with uh, uh, update the state that uh, we uh, at the beginning we, we didn't know that where are we now so x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 at the beginning, we uh, didn't know where are we, and the chance was 0 0.2 for all of them in the uh, update. And after update, you can see for uh, some cells, we are more certain than the others. You can see for some of them, are, the chance is 1.3 and for one of them is the chance is lower. So for the second cell and the uh, uh, third cell, the chances are higher. And for these guys, the chances are lower. So you can see actually we, we are becoming more and more certain uh, after the update or after the measurement that where are we now? And after the movement or the prediction, we became less, uh, confident where are we on the uh, map. Uh, thank you for watching. In the next video, I will go through the common filter and also in the next videos, I will go through uh, extended common filter, unscented common filter, and also particle filter for uh, localization. Thank you.